the pastor's heart and Dominic Steele and resetting the Anglican communion slowly, carefully and quite deliberately a new locus of leadership is emerging within the global Anglican communion a locus that is significantly intentionally focused on Christ and biblical authority rather than on London, England and the Archbishop of Canterbury. An important meeting of leaders of the Anglican community, the primates of the Global South, has just wrapped up in Cairo. The gathering follows the announcement earlier in the year on Ash Wednesday when the Global South primates issued a landmark statement saying that the Church of England and the Archbishop of Canterbury have forfeited their leadership role within the Global Communion. That followed the Archbishop of Canterbury and the English House of Bishops turning away from the teaching of Jesus on sexuality and blessing or proposing the blessing of what God calls sin. The Global South then committed to meet, to consult and to work with other Orthodox primates in the Anglican Church across the nations to reset the communion on its biblical foundation. Well, they have made good. The meeting in Cairo involved 13 serving primates and a stack of influential observers and partners. Highly significant and surprising, well, I was surprised, Nicky Gumbel, the former senior pastor of London's Holy Trinity Brompton and the founding father of the hugely influential Alpha Course and, incidentally, a friend of 50 years of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby. They knew each other back as far as school days. He was present at the gathering in Cairo. Leading the meeting was the chair of the Global South, Archbishop Justin Badiarama of South Sudan. He is now on the line from Cairo. Uh, Archbishop Justin, there is a stack to talk about, but first, our pastor's heart, and you were meeting in Egypt, right next door to Israel, which is, well, enveloped in war, and my friends at the gathering say there was deep distress over the fighting in Israel, and particularly when the news came through of the airstrike on the Anglican hospital, uh, came through to you while you were meeting. Yes, it was really sad that uh, we were meeting as uh, just close to where the conflict uh, is uh, ongoing and uh, we were really very sad to see and to hear all the distractions, the sufferings, the loss of human life and we prayed and uh, for our brother Archbishop Osama and uh, also prayed for all the affected families and individuals uh, in both Gaza and uh, Israel. I'm imagining that some of those at the primates meeting had actually been to that hospital, seen the hospital in the past. Is that right? Yes, that has been an Anglican hospital which uh, most of the primates had visited and had seen how the hospital was serving the communities there. So we were all sad to hear it has been brought down. Now you have just finished the meeting in Cairo with the primates of the Global South and I know there'll be people watching, listening, uh, who haven't been following these issues closely. And so I'm just wondering if the way might be to go right back to Ash Wednesday and your statement then that the Church of England and the Archbishop of Canterbury have forfeited their leadership in the Global Anglican Communion. It is said and to hear that uh, the Church of England has continued to go in a way which is contrary to biblical teaching. We lament with tears to hear all what is happening to the historic mother church of the communion and we continue to pray for her restoration. Have you had any interaction yourself with Archbishop Welby since the Ash Wednesday statement? Y yes, I have met him uh, several times as a brother and uh, I continue to pray for him. 
but he hasn't given you any sense of repentance. Uh, I mean, some of my friends have said they have called him to repent, but he's refused to do so. We have not seen any signs of repentance, but we are seeing signs of moving forward with their agenda. So we continue in prayers that the good Lord at the right time may touch their heart and they may come back to the truth of the gospel. These signs that you refer to of moving forward with their agenda, it was just a couple of weeks ago that the House of Bishops of the Church of England put out a statement saying they're going to move forward with these prayers to bless homosexual marriage um, and that despite all the criticism and unrest they do seem to be quite resolute. Yeah, it is such a sad situation. Bishops are supposed to be the ones guarding the faith but uh, unfortunately we are seeing that the bishops most of the bishops in the church of england have gone in a revisionist direction and uh, making all what they are doing now thinking that they are still uh, serving the church which is uh, not so the only thing we do as uh, leaders of the global south we continue in prayers for them but our joy is that out of all what is happening we can see that uh, many orthodox faithfuls are standing firm and on the biblical truth which is, gives us joy and uh, we are also happy that uh, some good number of bishops in the church of england have actually stood firm and uh, distanced themselves from what is going on. So we will continue to uphold them in our prayers and we stand with them. Yeah. Yes, it is encouraging these 12 faithful bishops in the English church who have put out this release dissenting from the rest of the English House of Bishops. What was the reaction at the Global South meeting when you discussed the statement of the 12 faithful English bishops critiquing the main House of Bishops position? Actually, we do know that uh, within the communion there is autonomy for each province, but we lamented in tears to see that a place which has been central in taking the gospel around the world has now gone the other way around. So that made us to cry to the Lord for his fresh anointing, fresh touching to the bishops in the Church of England that they may come back to the truth. Now the statement, the communique that you have just released in Cairo has a list of primates who are present and have signed and it's encouraging to see Nigeria joining with you and I was encouraged to see um, Archbishop uh, Albert Sharma of the uh, Church of the Province of Central Africa with you there as well. But the biggest surprise for me was the presence of the founder of the influential Alpha Course, uh, Nicky Gumbel. Uh, he was there with you. He has uh, now publicly joined you in endorsing the communique and consequently your Ash Wednesday statement and the Gafcon Kigali communique and of course the Lambeth 110 resolution. Sure, at the meeting what we did uh, actually we reaffirmed uh, our adherence to Lambeth resolution 110 in full both in moral teaching and pastoral care. And secondly, we also reaffirmed our Ash Wednesday statement. So, Nicky Gamble, though, he is for the unity of the church, and uh, that was what he was expressing. But as Orthodox leaders, we reassured him and all our Orthodox brothers and sisters 
in the Church of England that we will not leave them alone. We will continue to stand with them. And they should also know that uh, one thing which is clear uh, is that uh, since then, the demographic has changed. And uh, in the 1990s, it used to be that uh, uh, almost 80% of the Anglican communion was in England. But today, about 75% of Anglicans are estimated to be in the Global South countries. So we also see that the theology of many bishops in the Church of England has also changed towards revisionism. So there is no doubt we need new schemes for a new reality within our communion. So we reassured Nikki Gamble, we are not moving away, we are the communion. So we, he should only join us in prayers for part of the communion in the global north, not to continue going astray, they should come back to the communion. How did the relationship between Global South and Nicky Gumbel and Holy Trinity Brompton come about such that he was there? First, we welcomed him as a brother in our fellowship, in our midst, and uh, together with him, we reaffirmed our Ash Wednesday statement, and also we committed ourselves to the GSFA covenantal structure as the only means to bring together all Orthodox uh, provinces within the Anglican Communion. So him hearing that, he was a bit worried that maybe the church is going to separate, of which we assured him there is no separation, there is only strong stand for the biblical truth in our communion, which we are taking as the global south. So the other stream of revisionism uh, is what we are all lamenting and praying and waiting for genuine repentance. Once that is done, the communion will be together. Once that is not done, we will still keep our distance and continue in prayers. Nicky Gumbel has been a friend of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, since high school. I can't imagine that Justin Welby would be pleased that Nicky Gumbel came to the Global South Primates meeting in Cairo, and I can't imagine that he would have come to your Global South Primates meeting unless he was fairly grumpy with the direction that Justin Welby is taking the Church of England at the moment. Uh, is that a right read of the situation? Could be. I know Nicky Gamble is a, a biblical teacher. He teaches the biblical faith. And what we are doing in the Global South is the same thing, standing on the truth. So he thought wise to join us, to listen to us, so which he did and he was happy. And uh, our hearts were all refreshed and filled with joy to see Orthodox groupings within the Anglican Communion coming together. And uh, his feeling for his friend is what uh, I don't know, he might be the right person to express his feeling after the uh, fellowship uh, in the Global South Fellowship of Anglicans. It would seem to me that if London's Holy Trinity Brompton and their network and St. Helen's Bishop's Gate and All Souls and those networked with all those associated churches and the wider evangelical movement, um, if they're all expressing dissatisfaction with the direction that the Bishop of London and the Archbishop of Canterbury are taking things, well, I mean, I'm thinking separate from the issue of what is pleasing to Almighty God, um, I can't see how they think the Anglican Church in London is going to hold together. It is a hard situation 
but we continue in prayers for God's will to be done. So the battle is a spiritual, so which we continue in prayers for God's spirit to work. Because it is uh, really unfortunate. Uh, my dear brother, Archbishop Welby, is a person I respect. And he teaches, preaches the gospel so well. But I don't know why and what has happened that he's going this way. Maybe the devil is at work. We will continue in prayers for him and for our brothers and sister bishops in the Church of England. And it is sad to see that the lay people whom we were supposed to lead to maturity in the faith are then now the ones rebuking and challenging us as bishops. This is shameful. This shows there is something wrong with our leadership which we need to correct. It is not too late. The gospel says repent and believe. So that's the only way to say sorry we have come back. Do you get any glimmers of hope from any other bishops in the English church apart from this faithful 12 who've signed the statement dissenting from the rest of the house of bishops? Yes, I, the number is not only five, the number is going up. It has reached 11 or 12, which we are thankful and we continue in prayer that one by one, all the bishops might come back to stand on the biblical truth. There is great hope and that's why the Orthodox leaders a meeting and we are promised to annually meet and pray together for our beloved communion. I'm just reflecting on the resetting of the Anglican communion and the trajectory that you announced back on Ash Wednesday and just starting to see this play out and I'm just reading between the lines here but I wanted to ask you if in the old school Canterbury communion there were four instruments of unity the the primates Council, the Anglican Consultative Council, the Lambeth Conference, and the role of the Archbishop of Canterbury. I'm just thinking about how this is playing out. Would it be right to see that whereas in the uh, Canterbury Communion you had the Primates Council, in the reset we now have the, the Global South Primates Council, and if in the old school Canterbury Communion you had the Anglican Consultative Council, and now we have in June next year the Global South Assembly that we will have pretty much the same look and feel. And then if in the old school Canterbury communion there was a Lambeth conference, you're putting together a, a council of bishops meeting that's going to meet regularly. And, and then your role as chair of the Global South or the, or the chair of the Global South um, under the Global South Covenant structure, that would potentially mean that the person in Canterbury is largely irrelevant. Um, and is it the case, little by little, piece by piece, that we're shifting away from authority in London to this new locus of unity? Yes, my brother, as I told you earlier, things are changing. The communion instruments were set at a time which now uh, we are bypassing it with now the growing of uh, revisionism within the communion, the global south covenantal structure is the right thing now to follow because it binds us together in what we believe. And uh, it is no longer just one person, but there's uh, the primates coming together to decide and to protect and to be accountable for one another. And there is a space for discipline. Whoever goes astray and uh, comes out of the biblical faith, we have the right to isolate him or her until there is repentance. So for all Orthodox Anglicanism, the Global South structure 
is the only way to move forward. Unless those who are in revisionist provinces, they will be the one to continue with the communion instruments. So we would, I mean, it sounds like you're hoping that more and more people would join up around these new loci of unity that you're talking about here. That is our prayer, and that's what we are, we are seeing. In our fellowship here in Cairo, we were overjoyed to see all Orthodox groupings from around the world. Their representative attended from uh, the States in America, from Europe, from the Church of England, from uh, all over they attended, which gives a great joy and hope. And we know that there is a future still for our beloved communion. As we move from here with this new loci of authority, it sounds like the assembly that you've called in June for Cairo is gonna play a key role. And it sounds like it's gonna have real decision-making power. I think the assembly in June will be very historic because it will be like a synod, the first of its kind in the Anglican communion that decides, gives room for all Orthodox provinces to decide and to agree on issues and to plan what to do and to elect boards and councils that discusses uh, issues and encourages and gives guidance to all Orthodox within the Anglican communion. It sounds very significant, especially when one thinks that the Canterbury instruments have really failed to, well, express gospel Bible-based leadership. Sure, because we are seeing the old instruments, they no longer can work at this time where the revisionists are trying so hard to make their voice heard. So there is no hope in that. And uh, they are, all effort is trying to please the world, not to go following the biblical teaching. So it is so sad. And uh, to rescue the communion or to help the communion, we have to come uh, with something that can strengthen the orthodox uh, provinces and groupings within the Anglican communion. It is actually a rescue to our beloved communion. And so I'm just looking through the four different locuses of unity. Um, the new Global South Primates Conference, that's going to meet annually? Yes. And the June Assembly will have the look and feel of the old Anglican Consultative Council, except it's actually going to make real decisions. We will not uh, touch the old Anglican communion because that is something which was said and that is something that the revisionists are happy with it. We will just plan our own way how we move forward. And uh, within the structure, there is the primates council and then there will be a board for the house of bishops who decides and then there will be uh, boards and commissions for different uh, programs of uh, the fellowship to be carried out, uh, to take the gospel out to the ruined uh, world which is torn by sin. So that is basically what will happen in the assembly. But we are not there to discuss the instrument of the communion, no. We are no longer going to discuss that and then we have nothing to do because there are people who love it, so they go with it. They go with the old wine skin while we go with the new wine skin. Now, following on from the GAFCON conference in Kigali, I noticed that uh, Archbishop Welby called a meeting of primates in Rome next year. And I'm taking it you're saying that's an old wine skins meeting and you won't be engaging with that. Yeah, I know the language being said is let's forget our differences, let's work together. Though we are working in sin, but let's embrace the sin 
The main purpose is working together, which is not right. Sin is sin, and we cannot work together in sin. We work together as repentant people, who people who have been renewed by the gospel. That's the people who work together in the light of God's word. So unity is in the gospel. Not uh, I continue sinning and uh, you just tell me continue in your sin, but let's work together. That will not come. I was encouraged to hear about the setting up of the new Global South Bishops Training Institute. And I'm, I might have this wrong, but it felt to me like the GAFCON Bishops Training Institute has paused, uh, or I'm certainly not hearing about it at the moment, but um, you in the Global South have taken up the initiative to get the Bishops Training Institute going again. There is no conflict between Global South and GAFCON. GAFCON is an orthodox grouping and Global South is an orthodox grouping. There is no conflict in what we are doing at all. So the GSFA did announce that there are many bishops who have been consecrated and needs to be trained, needs to be oriented, and we are going to do that to enable the bishops understand their role as bishops, why they've been consecrated as bishops. So we are going to do that. And after the General Assembly, we will sit together how this will go forward. So we are not taking anything from each other and we are not competing. So our main objective is one, to reset our Anglican communion on its biblical roots. So as you take these initiatives, it is starting to look like there's a positive future for Orthodox Anglican leaders. There is a bright future through the GSFA covenantal structure. That is the hope and uh, that is the main theme of unity for all Orthodox uh, groupings and the provinces uh, within the communion, that's the hope we have. Archbishop Badi Arama, thank you very much for talking to us on The Pastor's Heart today. Thank you so much for giving your time to me. We pray for you that God blesses you and equips you to raise the voice of the gospel white and loud to be heard in the whole world. Thank you. That is Archbishop Badi Arama. He is the Primate of South Sudan and the Chair of the Global South Movement of Anglicans. And look, that is so significant. Uh, it is really clear that they have given up on Canterbury over the failure to follow, well, to obediently follow Jesus Christ. And little by little, but inexorably, we are seeing the resetting of the Anglican communion around the new trellises that are being put in place and very interesting uh, that Nikki Gumbel was present at the uh, meeting, uh, the Global South Leaders meeting. The Alpha movement seems to have sidestepped this controversy up until now. But I think in endorsing this communique, Nikki Gumbel is saying, I'm on the side of the gospel. I'm on the side of Jesus. I'm on the side of faithful Christianity and not on the side of, well, the trajectory that his friend of five decades is taking us. Uh, we want to pray for Nicky Gumbel that he might be able to persuade Justin Welby and those others over whom he has influence, like the Bishop of London, to repent. Thank you for joining us on the Pastor's Heart today. This is Dominic Steele, and we will be back next Tuesday afternoon. Mm -hmm.